of y'all welcome to my shop. Captive rings like this are always an intriguing uh, feature on a wood turning project. They fit on a number of projects. In this video I'm going to show you that they're not as difficult to cut as one might expect and I'm going to show you how it's not that difficult for you to actually make your own uh, captive ring tools to free the ring. Let me show you some of the typical projects that I find that captive rings are especially useful for. One of my favorites is this, this baby rattle with very large rings so they won't break. Of course, when you make baby rattles, you need to make sure the ends uh, are not a choke hazard. The simple test for that is they won't fit inside a toilet paper roll, but I don't want to get off track on that. Uh, others are a uh, one-piece coffee scoop with a little feature that's absolutely useless, but people seem to love it uh, because they can't figure out how you did it out of one piece of wood. And then certainly a... Uh, ring, a, a goblet with a captive ring, or, or more than one captive ring, is always uh, is always a fun fun project. As I suggested, rings come in all sorts of sizes. These are a half an inch for the baby rattle. Uh, the other other popular sizes are, you know, really small ones. I think for smaller goblets are in scale, and you can make them uh, the hoop bigger. Uh, but this is. Uh, just a hair under an eighth of an inch. Uh, the one on this one, which frankly I think is a little bit too large, a little too thick for this, this goblet, is closer to uh, almost a quarter of an inch, a little bit smaller than a quarter of an inch. So it needs to be a, appropriate uh, to a scale to fit your particular project. But let me show you the steps. First thing we're going to do is we're going to mark the right side of the bead, and then we're going to mark the left side of the bead. And then we're going to use a parting tool to part down on each side. How far you part down is a function of, uh, you know, what the stem that it's mounted on and as well as the size of the bead. And then we give ourselves just a little bit of room on each side. Now, you're going to take a, a, your normal spindle gouge and you're going to roll this over and make a bead on the outside. That's step two. Form the outside of the bead. Try to make it smooth as possible. Cut off any rough edges. And that's pretty much got it. If you still got a sharp edge, you can kind of, you know, scrape the sides a little bit. Now, the next step, before you do too much further, you want to go ahead and sand this because you won't have a chance once this bead gets parted off and it's easy to forget what you're doing, so I'm not going to completely sand it, but I want to emphasize the importance of that step. Now, this side is a bit smaller than this side, so let me go back and tune this up a little bit more. because you want each side to be about the same so when you part through they'll they'll meet at the uh, appropriate area. Let me see if I can get you a little larger view of that. Now I'm going to take a a captive ring tool and I'm going to take a moment here and just show you some of the different different tools that I've got. We could call this portion of the video the good, bad, and the ugly. Uh, this is the ugly. This is one of the first ones that I made out of an out of uh, out of an Allen wrench. Probably could have been ground better. Uh, here's one that I repurposed from a globe Christmas tree ornament um, hollower. It's it's a high speed steel tip braised to a, a carbon rod. It, it's better, but it's not really round in here like it probably should. But but it can work. Um, let, let me just show you some better ones though before we go too much further. The size of your tool is going to be somewhat dependent on the, uh, the beads you're making. For smaller beads, for example, for smaller beads, this one made out of a, I believe this is 3 8 inch uh, bar. This may have been the, the end of a tool at the end of its useful not life. I can't, 
I can't remember. So this is one I would call this a uh, cat's claw, uh, and this is not a bad one. It comes to a point which can do well for freeing up, and it's got a fairly broad uh, cove here, which allows it to be used for for larger larger beads. The key is having it ground down to a very sharp edge on each side that it, so it can be flipped over. Now there are commercial ones such as this one pictured here by Robert Sorby where you have to change the tip every time you cut on a different side which I don't you know I find kind of uh, useless I think it was a marketing gimmick so they could sell you a bunch of different sizes but frankly I think a larger if you make smaller ones you can make you a smaller tool if you do larger ones you can make you a larger tool like 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 this one which can be used on some smaller beads as well. Uh, this one is ground very similar to a crown tool is shown here in that you have a cove and you have a flat cutter here on the tip. And there's the side profile. It doesn't come to a complete point uh, which makes it a little easier to, to shape. And then you just grind this on your uh, your grinding wheel. Now this is made out of a, a piece of high-speed steel that's I believe an eighth of an inch thick that you can find on my website. It's this is uh, not on my website I'm sorry on my uh, in the show notes on my Amazon this is just a hair less than a half an inch whatever that is in millimeter I don't remember and it's just a that's all there is to it. Put it in some kind of handle uh, for mounting in a handle, I drill a hole the width of this if I'm using a flat bar and then uh, glue it in with epoxy with a half a dowel uh, that's been ground flat on a sander appropriately uh, fit and uh, pound it in on each side. Now this simple handle made out of PVC but you can make it out of just ordinary solid uh, wood. This one happens to come with a it, it was used to mount another tool, so this uh, set screw is not really used for this thing, I don't believe. Alright, so let's go back to turning our bead. Now I'm going to raise this up a little bit. Uh, because this is a scraper, I'm going to use this, this one right here. I kind of like this one. Uh, I want to have the tool rest far enough back where it's, it stays on the round bar for consistency but close enough that I can give it pretty good support. Now I want to start shaping the very back of this and I can use other tools to, to do that with. I could use the tip of a uh, thin parting tool or a thick parting tool for that matter but just come in there and just, and just guide it around. Do that on each side. Now you're going to come in with a, with a parting uh, or captive ring tool. Again, this is a scraper, so it goes in pretty much flat or slightly negative right. Come in on each side. This is I like to do one side and then the other and kind of check them. That's why I don't like that. Another reason I don't like that sorby tool. You'd be flipping it. And now I look to see did I get it round? And in this case, I can use this scraper here. It sings a little bit, but just kind of round it over a little bit where I, I developed a little bit of a flat spot. And then we're going to come back in, and actually I'm going to come back a little bit deeper. And then come in on the back side. And there we go. So, that's step three is is freeing up the bead. Now you've got a little trough there and what you want to do is now you want to get this the appropriate uh, size and I do that not with a parting tool but I'm going to use a, a spindle gouge to kind of clean that up a little bit and get it consistent. Now the bead's going to kind of fall in the trough. They'll move around. I don't need to be concerned with it. It'll move out of the way. Come in on the other side. Mm -hmm. 
here kind of spinning and rubbing and dancing, but it's okay. So that's pretty much pretty much got it. Now depending on the size of your project you might want to make that stem even smaller. And if this is a goblet it's going to be a very thin stem. If it's going to be a uh, baby rattle it's going to be a much thicker bead of course and then it'll be thicker. It'll be a thick, thick stem as well. Right, now if we examine this very closely we're going to see that we've got some sharp edges here. Let me see if I can't get a close-up of that. So now you can see that that bit of a sharp edge there and that's where uh, you know coming in and being being somewhat careful and maybe that bead with a sharp point wasn't the best tool for the job. Now so let's make another one and use another parting tool. Again, we're going to come down pat on each side. And I'm going to just use this as a, as a beating and parting tool. Just because it's with my hand, I don't know if it's the best tool for this, but y'all get the idea. Just going to round off the bead. That's step two. Sanding is step three. I'm going to get this a little bit lower here. I'm closer to the final size. Alright, now this time we're going to use a, a different tool. We're going to use this, this larger one with this flat cutter on the tip and let's see if it does any better. And we just tilt it a little bit because it's a scraper. This time I'm going to be mindful of that, uh, that shape where I part this off. Now, I think it's appropriate for me to tell you on, uh, it, at this point in time, for a lot of these projects, especially uh, small beads like, like this, it is a great idea, and certainly for one that's going to get a lot of use like this, um, to go ahead and dribble a little thin CA on here and let it dry before you finish parting it off. Do that after you sand it, maybe touch it up a little bit after you put the uh, uh, CA on it, but that will strengthen the fibers, reducing the chances of it uh, cracking on you as you're getting it loose. Let's see if we got a little better shape on this one. I've still got a little bit of a sharp edge there, so I probably, you know, some of this comes with experience and, and practicing with it. So you want to wait. You don't want to wait until you're doing your very first project to put a bead on it. Go ahead and practice making your beads. So let's go ahead and turn this part down. So we get kind of a uniform thickness. Now I want to show you another. A sanding trick. We're going to wrap a piece of sandpaper in here and use that to sand. Let me show you how that works. So I'm going to put a piece of sandpaper in here and bear with me because it's going to take a little bit of finagling. You want the sandpaper no wider than your your slot here. Here's the trick I'm going to show you. Uh, you can tape this on both sides if you have room, but the, but here's an even an even better trick. But also have the overlap so when it comes in this direction, it won't tend to un unravel. Now we're just going to put a, a few drops of CA 
and I'm using medium CA and then I'm just going to hit this with an accelerator real quick and bring it up and hold it hope I didn't stick my fingers too badly and let me put another little drop on this side Accelerators, I understand, it will last as long as 24 hours. You just want to be real careful not to spray it or anywhere around the CA, the mouth of the CA bottle. Like I say, you can tape it, but this works real well. Turns the speed of your lathe down. Now we're just going to maneuver these things around like this. Easier said than done. <laughs> Now, I find a grit somewhere around 120 grit is probably fine. You, I don't find it necessary to do more than one grit, but your mileage may vary. Well, I'm holding it, so again, hold it over, and gradually get the hole inside. Now we're friction it just a little bit and push it on. Just don't get your fingers in there. All right, now let me show you. Let me show you even another tool. Now this is very dense wood. This is uh, dogwood. It's about as hard as you're going to get unless you're doing it an exotic. All right, we're going to come in there at an angle. Come in there on this side. Now, I'm going to show you a different tool, but it's a variation of those others. And it's one I made out of a very large Allen wrench. Um, this one's 5 sixteenths of an inch, it says so right there. <laughs> now, here's the, here's the trick to the grinding on this thing, is you want it short. You don't want to long uh, leave that whole Allen wrench out there. You want to cut it back. You want to round the outside, you want to round the inside, you want a flat tip and you want it uh, beveled again flat on both sides. It doesn't have to come to a sharp edge here, but you do want nice crisp edges right there on the corner as a scraper. And let's see how this one works. And that freed it up first time. Kind of issue the beads a little flat so I need to clearly work on my technique I haven't done this in a while and let me show you one more one more if you're making very small goblets and you've got an accommodating dentist and in this case I'm going to use a dental pick that's been flattened. And you can see that it's, it's tiny. So this doesn't take real aggressive cuts. So sometimes it's not a bad idea to come in there first with with something else to do some of the work. I know there's folks that do this with a skew. I have not been successful at that. And now we're just going to come in here. And then from both sides. I think I got the the shape a little bit a little bit better. Now I've got these tools all ground, so I'm not going to regrind it. But I just want to show you that uh, it, they work great on a CBN wheel using the coarse wheel, uh, not a fine grid. It'll take forever. Set that down. But you can come in with a platform, probably at close to 90 degrees. And you can do some freehanding. You can do some on a, on a platform, but because of the short shank on this, you may have to do it freehanded.
but having this rounded edge on a wheel makes it very easy to round the insides point I'm trying to make. Now another tool you can do use this with is a uh, angle grinder, a uh, four inch angle grinder with a metal cutting wheel and you can use that, uh, put this in a in a vise and, and you can use that to shape it. Uh, so there's different ways. I would not want to shape this rounded profile on a stone wheel because you just don't want to get in there with that, those, those corners. Probably because you're going to deform it uh, uh, quite, a, quite a bit and any pre lateral pressure tends to uh, possibly create a hazard with the aluminum oxide wheel. The thing I want to show you is when you go to buffing these things, they'll tend to dance around, but I wouldn't worry about it. Just kind of hold it, you know, you want to get this edge in here nice and, and buff. And don't worry about the wheel spinning around as you do that. Just have a good hold on your work. And they'll dance a little bit, but you can do the outside of these, these rings as well. Sometimes I hold them a little bit and let them spin, put a little friction on them, so get them to go a little more uniformly there. And you get them nice and, and, and polished looking. After you put finish on it, buffing wheel, build buff, all three, uh, all three wheels after you use uh, preferably a, a finish that doesn't burn through like an antique oil that goes into the grain. You guys know how much I'd lo I love to teach or I wouldn't be making these videos. So I do teach lessons in my shop. If you live in the Atlanta area, you got relatives in the Atlanta area, or you just, you're just traveling through, uh, check it out. Details on my, my webpage. If you like this video, give it a, please give it a thumbs up. Uh, if you enjoyed this, this video, it include making tools. You might want to check out the uh, link that I've got on one side or the other for a playlist on making tools. Y'all stay safe. Come on back here.